Hey guys, welcome back to my sewing room. My name is Amanda. If you haven't been here before, if you have, welcome back. Today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to create this bustier style corset bodice with separate cups. The cups are fully lined, full of lace, everything you guys asked me for. Ever since I posted this over on Instagram, you guys have been DMing me and commenting and asking me to do a tutorial on how to create this bodice. So I decided to go ahead and film it from start to finish. If you guys are interested in figuring out how I created this pattern though, hit the join button down below for you guys to go ahead and join the Mom Matt Sells membership. And over there, I post all of my pattern drafting tutorials. But today's video is a sew along, so if you do have pattern, you can go ahead and follow along. I have also made this same bodice in quite a few different ways. I want to show you guys how versatile this style is. You can do it like this alone. Oh, obviously, it's not finished yet. Um, alone as an actual just bodice that you can wear a separate skirt. You can wear pants. Or, come on, Marshall. You can wear a separate skirt or pants or um, any kind of thing. You know, it's, It'll be more like a two-piece kind of deal. You can do it like that. Or you can add it to a dress. I've done it quite a few times. This dress, this same pattern modified, as well as this dress, which is pretty much the same pattern. So the options are really limitless when it comes to creating this style bodice. And I think it'll be a good starting point um, for everyone who does sew bridal in the bridal field um, to go ahead and learn how to create this bodice. Now it can be done plain or it can be done uh, fully embellished with lace like how we're doing it today. So stay tuned for that if you guys are interested in seeing how I created this corset. Okay, so these are all the materials that we're gonna need. We're gonna need our corset that we drafted down below. We're also going to need our corset mesh. You're gonna need some interfacing. Um, I like to use Pillon SF 101. You're gonna need some bra foam. You're also going to need some underwire. Please do not skip the underwire, you need it. I'm using size 40 underwires. For me, I'm a D cup. You're gonna need a pair of fabric scissors, your measuring tape, a little bit of satin fabric. I like to use my scraps, I never throw them away. And you're gonna need some lace. Same thing here, these are all scraps left over from a wedding dress. Okay, so I have all of my pieces cut out and I have all my pieces prepared. I have my um, bodice pieces cut from one layer of corset mesh. I have my um, cups cut from bra foam and my satin pieces cut from the cup pattern and they're also interface. I also have some straight grain pieces of corset mesh cuts and some bias pieces of satin. So these are my bra cups here. Notice that I have them um, how they're going to be. And this is how you're going to sew them together. If you guys are interested in seeing how I sew these cups, I have a detailed video um, that you guys can go ahead and check out. Um, I didn't really go to in detail because this is more about the construction of the bodice rather than the cups since I've already done a detailed video. So I'm just going to go ahead and zigzag these together. Yes, you do need a machine that does a zigzag. So I'm going to use my old faithful to go ahead and zigzag these together. Now I have this all done. I'm going to go ahead and set them to the side and I'm going to work on my fabric portions of the cups. So I'm using a satin, like I said, and I have interfaced the satin. You really do want to interface your fabric. Notice that I have an S here that lets me know that this is my side piece. And then I have a C, which lets me know that that's my center piece so that I can match this up with the top, which also has a C and an S. You do not want to mess this up, y'all, because you can sew it backwards and it looks crazy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to match my... Um, my bottom pieces, I'm gonna sew those first. I'm also gonna do the same thing with my lining pieces. Okay, so I have my main um, pieces and my, my lining pieces all assembled and I'm gonna go ahead and take them to my sewing machine. I'm sewing these with a quarter inch seam allowance. So slightly smaller than what I usually do, but you don't really want a lot of bulk here. So I'm gonna sew my satin pieces and I'm also going to sew my lining pieces as well.
Okay, and this is a mistake that I made. Please do not ease in the extra fullness of your bottom cups. Okay, if you have extra fullness in your bottom cups that doesn't quite fit onto the top cut piece, just let it fall off to the side and you can trim it off later. Um, easing creates puckering on the cup that is, not, is very hard to get rid of. As you guys will see in a little bit, I was really fighting to get rid of that fullness that I eased in there. So please make sure that you're not easing. Make sure to click that subscribe button down below and also turn on the notification bell so you can be alerted when I post new videos. Okay, so we have everything sewn and I went ahead and pressed my seam allowances up for that middle seam using this cup pressing mold. I will link below in the description box. You guys need this. It is a game changer when it comes to getting the perfect shape for my cups. It just has the perfect curve. They have it in small, medium, and large. This is a size medium. I am planning on picking up a size large. So here are my lining pieces that we assembled earlier. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I have it laying on the right cup. And I'm matching up my seams here. What we're gonna do is we're going to fully line our cups. In my last detailed cup tutorial, I taught you guys how to do the method of using the bias binding. Today, we're going to fully line our cups, okay? So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm matching up my seams first and then I'm going to distribute the fullness of the fabric evenly. Once you do this, you do not want to uh, flip your cup up and down, you know what I mean? You wanna make sure that the lighting stays the way it's going to be or you're gonna have puckering and it's gonna be, it's gonna be a mess. So make sure that you keep your cup the way it is now and I'm gonna go ahead and baste all around it like I did here and I'm gonna trim off the excess here because we no longer need this and we wanna make sure that all our seam allowances are how they should be. So make sure you're trimming that off. And when I say baste, um, I really meant I sewed it on because I use a 2.5 millimeter stitch. Uh, don't use a wide stitch. We don't want this coming up at any point. You want to actually sew this on. Okay, I have both of my pieces nice and trimmed. Now you see I have my C's on one side and my S's on the other, and I'm matching that up with my cut pieces too, and I'm gonna place them wrong side to the right side of the, of the phone, okay? So that we have the lining in the back, and then we have our fabric piece in the front. Now I'm going to put my, uh, my front piece right side down to the cut, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is you wanna mark your centers. So I'm folding that in half and I'm gonna mark my center. This is gonna help us align our cup so that we're not having any um, extra easing that we have to do. You wanna make sure that your centers are what your center is, okay? And if you have extra excess, let it fall off to the side. Do not try to ease. Easing is not our friend when it comes to this, okay? I'm gonna match our size. Luckily my pattern didn't match up here. I don't know what happened um, with my cups but I'm gonna match my sides and then I'm gonna pin in between and then we're gonna go ahead and get started with sewing these cups. I just wanted to pause here and talk about the sponsor of today's video really quick, Skillshare. For those of you who don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. I've recently yet purchased a new camera and equipment to upgrade the quality of my product photos, so I've turned to a few Skillshare classes to help me with that. My personal favorite is DIY product photography, style and shoot creative skills by Rachel Galata and Daniel Inski, which has really helped me think of creative new ways to photograph all of my finished gowns and products and things that I've been making lately. Skillshare is the perfect learning environment. There is no ads. They constantly keep launching new premium classes so you can stay focused on where your creativity takes you. And what's better is it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. So the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. Let's learn and grow together, guys. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so I have it all pinned here and I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance here. If you guys know, um, when we drafted the pattern, we, le we left a half an inch seam allowance, but I'm gonna sew this with 3 8 of an inch because I wanna account for the extra fullness of that foam there. So make sure you're sewing this with 3 8 of an inch. I'm going to backstitch at the beginning and at the end, and then when I finish, I'm going to trim down the bra foam. 
just the bra foam and the lining. You don't wanna trim down your satin piece because after we do this, we're gonna go ahead and understitch. Okay, so this is what it looks like when we trim it down. Now we're gonna go ahead and understitch. Now understitching is pretty much you're sewing your seam allowance to your lining so that when you flip your garment or whatever you're working on right side out, uh, your lining does not poke out. So that's what we're doing here and I'm gonna show you guys a close up in just a minute. Mind you, when I'm doing a, um, any kind of top stitch that a bride can see. I'm sewing this with a 3.5 to a four millimeter stitch length, okay? You wanna make sure that you're expanding that stitch length. You don't want it to be 2.5. And this is what it looks like, nice and clean, and it holds that lining where it needs to be. Now I'm gonna go ahead and smooth and pin all the way around so I can baste my, um, my satin piece to my bra foam, and I'm gonna use a basting stitch for this, and this is what it looks like. You also wanna trim that down as well. Now we can take this over to our ironing board and press it like our life depends on it. So here I am at my ironing board. I like to use my steamer first to get this nice and hot, and you will see, um, I think a steamer is a really good investment when you're doing cups. You really wanna make sure that you're constantly steaming and pressing and molding your cup into the right shape every step of the way so that when you're done, you can have a perfect shape that shapes to the body. There's no gaps at the top. So make sure you really take uh, steaming seriously as well as pressing too. And I'm pressing with my Gravity Feed Steam Iron. If you guys wanna review on this, I think I've used it for quite, some time. I've used it for long enough to do a detailed review. So give this video a like and leave a comment down below if you guys want a detailed review on my iron. Now I'm pinning this to my dress form and this is when the, the issues start to come around with me noticing, uh, noticing my the, what I did when I eased it in. You see what I'm doing here? So I had to really steam and steam this down, steam all the extra easing kind of down away from the center of the cup. Now, if I was doing this and I was using a plain cup, I probably would redo this cup, but since it's gonna be covered with lace, I was just like, I'm gonna steam it and roll on, okay? So now we have our bodice pieces here. Like I said, I have them cut out of corset mesh. I'm gonna be using this quarter inch plastic boning here. I get it from wallwalk.com. I will leave the link to it below in the description box, but this is the boning that I use for all of my corsets and I absolutely love it, okay? I'm pinning all of my bodice pieces wrong side together. I know that's not bad, but that's what we're doing. We're pinning it wrong sides together because we're going to sew a French seam as uh, which we're gonna use for tunnels for our boning channels, okay? Now, I'm so sorry about some of the unfocused clips in this video. I told you guys, I'm, I'm, I just bought a new camera, y'all. I'm learning, okay? I tried to upgrade my shit, and I'm, I'm, not, doing, I'm not doing too good, but anyway um yes so i'm i'm still learning on how to, to focus the camera in the right places and things like that so please 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 bear with me but i'm sewing a half inch seam allowance here um with my fabric still wrong side together sewing all the seams with a half an inch seam allowance i'm making sure to snip all of my threads you want to make sure as you're working you're keeping this nice and clean uh you don't want any uh threads all over the place when you're done okay so just make sure that Clean as you go, like you're supposed to do when, you, when you're cooking, right? Clean as we go. Not that I do that, but just saying. Now that I've sewn all those seams, now I'm going to trim them down to about an eighth of an inch um, seam allowance here. I'm trimming it down to about an eighth of an inch, and then I'm going to flip it so that our fabric is now right sides together, and I'm using my nails to really get into the, the crease of that seam so I can make sure that it's nice and even on both sides. And then I'm sewing this seam with a quarter inch seam allowance, maybe a slightly larger than a quarter of an inch to make sure my bony fits through. Okay, and you wanna sew all of your seams this way. You wanna make sure that your seam allowance is on point, guys, because if your seam allowance is not on point, there's so many seams in this, it's not gonna fit, okay? So make sure that uh, you're sewing your first seam at half an inch, and then when you're putting it right sides together, you wanna sew that at a quarter of an inch. Now that we have that sewn, now we're gonna go ahead and secure down our boning channels. I like to uh, have my boning channels facing the center. So I have 
um, face my pony channel so that it's facing my center back. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew that down. We wanna use a 2.5 millimeter stitch here because this is a construction stitch. So this is what's gonna help keep our boning where it needs to be. So make sure that you're sewing this nice and slow and neat. Make sure when you're sewing it, you're spreading your fabric open so that there is no puckering underneath. And you're gonna do that for all of your seams. Okay, now that we have all that done, now we need to add our intermediate boning channels. So what I've done here is I've cut some on the grain, so on the straight grain strips. I think I, they're about an inch and a quarter or maybe an inch. I really don't even pay attention to how wide. I, I just honestly do them the width of my ruler and then I double fold them so that it creates a tunnel. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to fold my, um, my corset in half. I'm folding it in half because number one, I wanna find the center of my corset. Always find the centers of everything, y'all. And then I also want to align, oh, I'm snipping my centers here. I want to align all of my seams to make sure that my seam allowances were on point and uh, consistent for both sides of the corset, okay? And at this point, you probably do wanna measure the corset to make sure that it's the right size. Uh, I had a little boo-boo here that I'm gonna show you how to fix in a little bit. But um, for now, I'm just making sure that my seam allowances were good and my corset is not lopsided or anything like that. So now that I have that taken care of, I'm gonna open it up and you see I have that nice crease there in the center. I'm going to use my disappearing ink pen, link to it below, and I am going to draw a straight line down uh, the middle of my corset. This is gonna be our boning channel for the center, okay? Now I'm gonna come down, I think it was, uh come on okay two and a quarter inches from the top here and this is going to be where my diagonal um bony channels stop on that center front line so i'm going to draw a line from there down to the bottom of my princess seam and i'm going to do that on both sides you can place your bony channels any way you want you can not you can omit this right here you can add them going the opposite way so it's more of a v than an upside down v you can do whatever you need to uh, for me, um, I am quite heavy busted, so I wanted to make sure that I have all the support that I, I need here. I'm gonna, measure, I'm gonna measure five eighths of an inch over from my cup area, and then I'm going to measure the, to the midpoint of my princessing panel, and I'm drawing a straight line there. That's gonna be another supporting bone for my bust. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw um, a line from the top of my side seam to the bottom of my princess seam. This is going to be another supporting bone. So notice that we do have overlapping bones, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in a little bit, and it really is very supportive. For my back seam, I'm gonna draw another diagonal bone there, and that really uh, keeps everything nice and uh, straight and nice and smooth back there in the back, okay? And what I did was I just folded my corset in half, and I'm just kind of marking my bones so that they're nice and symmetrical. And we're gonna take everything over to the sewing machine and get ready to sew these on. So we're gonna sew this again with a 2.5 millimeter stitch. I'm using um, my fingers to make sure that this is nice and straight. You wanna sew very close to the edge here because you wanna make sure that your boning still fits through. Now I have some, some tips if your boning doesn't fit still, but you kind of want to make sure that you're sewing um, at the best of your ability so that you're not having to do these little tips and tricks that I have uh, to fix mistakes. But when, when mistakes arise, I mean, what can you do but fix them, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and sew down both sides. I do also want to say that you don't want to sew down one side and then up the other. If you're sewing down one side, you need to take a, uh, cut your thread and come back to the top and sew down the other side as well. You don't want to mitch match because that's um, warp, that's kind of warping the fabric and sometimes your corset can come, come out a little bit wonky that way. So make sure you're going top down, top down always, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and sew on all the rest of my bones here. Okay, so when I'm going over my bone, uh, my channels that overlap, sort of, 
I'm gonna put my bone, my, I'm gonna put my boning in the channel first. I'm cutting off the seam allowance at the top there, and then I'm gonna continue sewing my diagonal seams. This is just so um, I'm not sewing my boning channel closed accidentally because I've done that way too many times. So I just wanna make sure that I have that boning piece in there. So I know if I'm sewing, it's, I'm sewing over the boning, okay? And my industrial machine can take that. If you do have a domestic machine, you wanna make sure that you're being careful when you're around your boning channels here, especially on this one right here, um, where it's literally going straight over that bone. You wanna make sure that you're going nice and slow over that area. All right, so I have all of my boning channels sewn and I did put in all of my boning off camera because that is so annoying, y'all. And then I went ahead and pressed my corset nice and flat. Now I am going to go ahead and measure my corset. Now, boo-boo, I should have measured this before because my corset is now too big, but I will show you guys how to fix that. I'm looking like, what in the world? Okay, so I folded it in half again and I know the half, what the half of my waist is, including seam allowance. So I just went ahead and measured that. And I'm gonna mark that with my disappearing ink pen. And I'm gonna do the same thing across the bust line. I don't know what happened with this, y'all. I must have cut it weird. I don't know. That's why you're not supposed to be sewing late at night, okay? <laughs> or cutting out your fabrics late at night. So make sure that, um, you know, you're you're cutting your stuff accurately. But like I show you here, there's a fix to it. It's not, it's not a lost cause. So I marked those there. And I have another boo-boo here, y'all. And I, you know what? I was thinking I should just cut this out and you know, nobody would be the wiser. But at the end of the day, I feel like I wanna show you guys that nobody's perfect, especially not me, right? Especially not me. So um, I wanted to show you guys my mistake here. I obviously messed up in my pattern drafting or so I don't know what it was, but my corset is also too high. So what I did was I'm like, I'm just gonna roll with it. Okay, I'm gonna match my princess seams and then I'm going to um, match all the way up to both sides of my cup and then we will figure out um, the extra that I need to take off after this. Okay, so as you can see, like I said, I, it's too tall, right? So what I'm doing is I'm measuring from my apex point down to my waist to make sure that that is correct. And this, it's the correct measurement, so it's just too high here. So what I do, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and sew my cup on, and then after I sew my cup on, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a stitch line all the way from the side of my cup to the center back and just cut that extra off and we'll be good. And I will, I did film that so you guys will see that. So now I have my cup and I'm sewing it down. I like to sew it with my cup side up first, okay? And then I'm sewing this with a 2.5 millimeter stitch. You wanna make sure this is a nice tight stitch. Sewing this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance and I am sewing over my pins, y'all. I sew over my pins. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna change. I will sew over my pins. Just to let y'all know, <laughs> okay? I get too many comments about me sewing over pins and I'm just like, come on, it's okay. Um, anyway, but. Yes, so quarter of an inch seam allowance and I am making sure that every 
stitch I take, there's nothing underneath it. So you can kind of feel, I know, um, notice that I'm feeling with my hands before I kind of put it through the machine to make sure that I'm not sewing any extra, I'm not sewing any puckers or anything like that because corset mesh will rip when you try to seam rip it and then you will have to do your corset all over again. It'll be just so annoying. Or you can cover it with lace, you can do that too. Back stitching at the front and at the back and making sure that I trim all of my all of my threads and everything. So this is what it looks like. It does look really clean, but like I said, I have this extra here at the top. So let's go ahead and take care of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm folding my seam allowance from my cup back, cause I don't wanna catch that. Right at the edge of my cup, I'm gonna sew a stitch. I'm not back stitching or anything like that, cause I just wanna make sure that it's just right where I need it to be. I'm moving all of my boning out of the way, and then I'm just gonna kinda eyeball straight down, or we'll add a slight angle down to my center back to create a new neckline for the top there. And if you guys followed the pattern drafting tutorial over in my membership section, you guys won't have to do this. Or if you purchase this pattern, you won't have to do this because it's already fixed. I don't know what happened with this one. I decided to do this one, uh, this one from scratch because I wanted to do it in my measurements and not in a standard size. So I fudged up somewhere in my pattern drafting, but it is okay because you see, it can be fixed. And I'm gonna do the same thing for that center seam, and I'm also gonna do it for the other side as well, which I've already done with the magic of editing. Okay, so now that I have my top all squared away, now I'm gonna work on my bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm sewing a quarter of an inch from up, or actually I think I'm doing a half an inch here, up from the bottom edge. Notice I am sewing through all of my boning because this is what is gonna keep your boning channels in, uh, your boning in place so it's not flopping all over in your boning channels. If you do have a domestic machine, you might not wanna sew over your boning. You might wanna cut it out of your seam allowance, but with my industrial machine, I actually do really prefer having some of this boning here into my seam allowance here. I noticed that it keeps my, um, whatever I'm attaching it to at the bottom, it keeps it nice and firm and, and solid, okay? And I will also be doing a tutorial pretty soon here with a circle skirt and a bone facing, so stay tuned for that. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so I have another one of these tunnel things that I use for my bony channel. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to create my underwire channel, okay? So I'm starting with it um, on, like the one of the corners is on my cut piece and I'm sewing only on my seam allowance here, okay? So I'm gonna sew pretty much over the existing stitch line that we use to put this onto the corset is what I'm sewing over. You wanna make sure that you're not sewing any puckers, you're not sewing past that. You wanna make sure you're sewing right on that, okay? And um, you wanna sew this all the way around. Once you get to the end, you wanna go ahead and back stitch and then you wanna trim off the excess. And then to finish it off nice and clean on the inside, you wanna go ahead and trim off the excess um, bra foam lining, all of that stuff, you wanna trim that off so it's nice and clean because this corset is 
transparent y'all and you want to kind of tell your clients too like i can't hide all of my stitching you want to transport transparent corset you're going to see stitching so let them know that and try to stitch as neatly and as slow as possible so that the stitch lines that they do see are really neat okay so what i'm doing here is i'm taking that tunneling that i sewed onto the cup and i'm wrapping it underneath my seam Okay, and then I'm sewing it down. So there's no raw edges here and it looks really clean. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create a channel for me to go ahead and stick my underwire through. Here me, here's me doing it on the other cup in a better angle. I decided to change my angle here. I'm doing the same thing and this cup actually came out better. So, so I'm trimming that down then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it. Or actually on this one, I decided to sew another strengthening stitch um, over the same seam line, I wanted to sew a strengthening stitch because I don't think I caught everything. And then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it to the inside and sew that down again. When you flip it to the inside and you're top stitching your, your underwire channeling down, you wanna make sure that you're pulling that corset and making sure you're not sewing no puckers onto the other side. And then I just inserted my underwire and it looks nice and clean like this. I love, 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 love this, y'all. I've been so obsessed with these corset bodices. Y'all just do not understand. And this is what it looks like before pressing. So make sure that you go over to your ironing board and give it a good press and it should look like this. Now it's time for the fun part, which is lace. Before we put our laces, uh, our lace on, you wanna make sure that you're trimming down all of your extra threads that you may have not gotten. And I'm just showing you guys here the issue that I have with my cups how you can kind of see the bottom two pieces are puckering and that's because I eased it into the cup instead of letting it fall off the side. So guys, really, really, really make sure that you're not easing this in. But like I said, I'm not too pressed about it now because I know I'm going to uh, completely cover this with lace so you, it won't be seen. But if you are doing a plain corset, you wanna make sure that either you really steam the crap out of it and get those puckers out of there or you, you recut it. And I just wanted to show you guys another dress that I did similar to this, and I had none of these issues. So I'm not sure. It It's just every time I make something in my size, it just never works out. I can make it in a size six, I can make it in size 18 and 22, and it works out. But when I make it in my size, it just does not. I don't know what's going on. But I'm determined, y'all. I'm determined to keep making things in my size because I just, I kind of steer away from that. And then I'm like, oh, I don't have anybody to model my clothes. Well, I wonder why, because you're not you're not making it in your size. You have a whole body, you know? So I'm gonna I'm gonna try, y'all. Anyway, so here I'm just placing all of my lace on here. I sped it up um because you guys have seen me place uh, place lace so many times. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys enjoy the music while you watch me place all this beautiful lace onto this corset. And of course, as always, the direct link to this lace will be linked in the description box below.
All right, so with the power of editing, I'm all done with placing the lace. Now I'm taking this over to my machine and I'm going to machine on all this lace. Now, since I've been uh, entirely too busy, which is a good thing and a bad thing for this bridal season, I've been trying to do mostly all I can do by machine, right? So instead of hand sewing this, which I did on the bodice before and it took me like three days to hand sew all the lace, I decided to go ahead and sew this by machine. And like I said, with my industrial machine, I have no problem going through all of the layers, all of the boning, all of that. It goes through it like it's just not nothing. So if you have a home sewing machine, you want to make sure that either you, A, get a darning foot, uh, which I go into detail about. I have a whole video on how to, sew in, how to sew on lace by machine over on my YouTube channel. Go ahead and check that out. Or you can click the little eye above here and it will take you straight to that video. Watch it after this one. Um, yeah, I have a whole video on how I sew lace. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. Or you can go ahead and sew this down by hand um, if, you, or if you're not able to sew through all of our bones and things like that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all of this lace on. Now the cups do have to be sewn by hand no matter what because we have our lining and we want it to be nice and clean. So sew all of your bodice first and then go ahead and hand sew your cups. All right, we have our cups nice and sewn. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on putting in our label. Like I said, y'all, top stitching is top. This is a, a transparent course that you go top stitch, right? So just make sure you're nice and neat. Um, I used to be afraid of top stitching. Now I top stitch everything. As long as you're neat, you'll be okay. I'm also putting my hanging loops here at my side seam. And what I do is I like to use double faced quarter inch ribbon. Okay, link to, link to it below in the description box. Um, and I cut it 12 inches long and then I press it in half and that's what I use for my hanging loops for my bodice, okay? Now I'm taking those bias strips that we cut earlier and I'm going to go ahead and sew loops. Now I'm sewing my loops super, super thin. I, I It's like not even, maybe not even an eighth of an inch thin. It's super thin, y'all, because I like to have my corset loops really thin and I'm going to sew all the way down. Now when you're doing this, you do want to have a really tight stitch length. I would say about a two to 2.5. I think I'm using a two here. You wanna make sure that uh, it's nice and strong because when we turn all of this seam allowance through, you wanna make sure that you're not popping any stitches and having to go back and make a new loop, okay? Now I've turned my loop and I'm cutting, uh oh, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on here. I'm, I'm cutting my loop two inches long. So I need five for each side, so a total of 10 and I'm cutting them two inches long, okay? And I had a boo-boo with my loop turner, it broke on me, so I had to uh, I had to run out and buy a new one because I'm not turning by thread, it's just, it don't work by me, okay? Now I'm measuring out my seam allowance from the top and the bottom, and then I'm spacing my boning um, guidelines one inch apart. So my loops are two inches long, and I'm placing them, so each loop is one inch wide. Okay, I hope I hope I'm explaining that right. If I'm not, please leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of my loops on. Oh, 
And I tell you what, y'all, I went and got my nails done for my birthday, and I haven't had my nails done in so long, so you know, I'm feeling cute and everything, but these nails get in the dang way. And this is what it looks like when you have all your loops sewn on. You wanna make sure your loops are more of sisters than cousins, if that makes sense. Now I have another one of my straight grain pieces that I've pressed nice and flat, and I'm gonna go ahead and secure this on to my loops here. I'm gonna place a pin there so when I put it under my, my presser foot, it doesn't move on me. And I'm sewing this with a half an inch seam allowance, okay? Back stitching at the beginning and back stitching at the end. You could back stitch every time you go over your loops, but I kind of don't want to perforate that area with too much stitching. So I kind of just, you know, roll right over it. And with that corset mesh, it helps you roll over it nice and easy. So I'm going to sew my first one with a half an inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to trim off that extra there at the bottom. And then I'm going to make another stitch within my seam allowance. So. For those of you who are counting, we sewed we sewed the loops on there, that's one stitch. Then we sewed the corset mesh onto the loops, that's another stitch, and now we're doing another stitch to uh, secure these in place. This is the highest stress point of your garment. You wanna make sure these loops are not coming out. For alterations, when I did alterations, well, I still do, when I do alterations, this is the most uh, uh, requested repair in these corset gowns is, oh, my one of my loops came out because I pulled it too tight. Oh, no, no, honey. All, no, all the loops are gonna stay in there with one of my dresses. So now what I'm doing is I'm pulling my corset mesh outwards and I'm going to understitch, okay? So I'm stitching the seam allowance onto my corset mesh and this is gonna really help us turn the um, corset mesh to the inside and have it nice and clean. And for those of you who are counting, this is our fourth stitch going through our loops. And I'm gonna go ahead and back stitch at the end. Okay, so now that I have that done, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it to the inside because I wanna see if it looks good, and it does. So now I'm going to fold the raw edge of my corset mesh down and then fold it down again so that we have a nice channel here because we're gonna put another piece of boning through here. Now, if you guys notice, I am sewing through some boning here at the top. Um, and this wouldn't be the case if my corset pattern was on point like it was supposed to be, but it worked out in the end as you guys have seen. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. You wanna make sure that you're sewing this at at least a quarter of an inch seam allowance because you want to make sure that you can fit your boning, your boning through this, okay? So make sure you're sewing it with a proper seam allowance and backstitch at the beginning and at the end. And this is a top stitch, y'all. So you can see this through all of your layers on the, um, outside so make sure that this is nice and neat and then when i get to the bottom i'm holding down my uh, reverse lever and i'm uh, going back into my same stitch and then i'm going to back stitch a couple times at the bottom here to make sure our boning does not come out once we place it in And then you wanna make sure you're trimming off your seam allowances there. And y'all, it looks so clean. Every time I make one of these bodices, I'm just like, yeah, I get better every time. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and place my boning in here. I'm gonna struggle, so I'm probably gonna cut past it. I'm placing my boning in here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and seal off the top. So I'm gonna seal off the top the same way we did everything else, okay? I have a straight grain piece of corset mesh I'm going to fold the seam allowance back. So the half an inch, I'm folding that back, lining that up with my center back, and I'm gonna go ahead and sew this on. Now, I could have put a loop higher, another loop higher here. Um, so next time I do this corset, I will add another loop at the top here because there was a little bit of negative space there, which I guess if you had a modesty panel at the back, it wouldn't be so much of a big deal, but I didn't wear this with a modesty panel, so you can kind of, it's like a gap there. And I'm gonna go ahead and bind the top two. I'm binding everything, y'all. Top, bottom, everything. Everything's getting bound, uh, bound, okay? So I'm sewing this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and I'm gonna sew this all the way up until I hit my cup, and then I'm gonna gracefully come off. Thank you. 
Make sure that you're not sewing your hanging loops. That would be annoying. Okay, and then I'm also going to pin back um, some of my extra little lace here that I have. I do not want to get that caught up in this either, okay? Let's just work smarter and not harder. And I'm going to go ahead and continue sewing this. And like I said, I'm going to sew right off the edge there. You want it to be seamless when everything is done. After I do that, I'm gonna once again trim my threads and then I'm also going to trim down my seam allowance here because we're going to turn this to the inside and we want it to be nice and clean because like I said again, this is a transparent corset bodice and you will see everything through. So you wanna make sure that all your seam allowances are trimmed down. I'm also going to do another understitch Remember when we're doing understitching or any kind of top stitching that a bride can see, we're uh, making our seam allowances 3.5 to four millimeters so that it's nice and clean on the inside. We don't have too small of a stitch or too big of a stitch either, okay? And I'm gonna understitch this and then I'm going to flip this to the inside, tuck under my raw edge, and then sew it down again the same way we did the bony channels at the back. And realistically, if you wanted to, you could add some of that uh, non-slip kind of elastic, or I'm not even sure what it's called, uh, non-slip stuff right here where you're sewing this. You can um, sew this in at the same time as you're doing this, and that'll help kind of grip it to uh, your customer's body so that it's not like digging into them. I think they put it in a lot of those, these kind of bustier style tops and those, um, what do you call it? Like lingerie kind of kind of things. So you could put that in here too. That'll be idea. I need to. I'll probably order some and experiment experiment with that and let you guys know how that goes. And like I said, do not be afraid of top stitching because I guarantee once you turn it to the to the outside, the lace is so busy you won't even be able to see the top stitching. All right, and now I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom. Notice I don't have any loops on this side, and that's because, like I told you earlier, my, my loop turner broke. So I decided to go ahead and finish up um, what I can finish up until I went and got the um, loop turner. So I'm gonna go ahead and place another bias, uh, well not bias, another straight grain strip, and this is the bottom here. And I'm sewing this with a one inch seam allowance. I'm going through the bones and everything one inch seam allowance all the way across the bottom. And this is gonna finish off our bottom edge nicely for the trim that we have to put on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim that seam allowance down again. And then the same thing we did to the top, I'm going to flip it I'm going to flip it, understitch it, and then I'm going to flip it to the inside and tuck that raw edge in and stitch it again. Now here at the bottom, since we do have boning in the seam, it's not gonna flip all the way over and that's totally fine because we're covering this with uh, a trim. I need you guys to be quiet. When I'm done. Thank you. 
All right, now that we have that done, I'm, I cut off some of the frilly trim that's on this same lace. I kind of cut it off so that I only have the scalloped portion of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and just sew this on y'all with, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna sew this on with a straight stitch down the entire um, bottom of the corset. I'm also gonna sew this on with a straight stitch across the top too. And once I have the other uh, loops in, this is the finished corset, guys. What do you think? Um, I absolutely love this corset. I think I put my foot in it, to be honest. And they are absolutely beautiful. I do have them on sale, uh, what, for sale on my website. So make sure to go ahead and check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I appreciate you guys more than you know. Check out this next video and I'll see you guys over there.